Okay, so we were talking about the two machine infinite bus system. So we are adding a new machine. And what we need to discuss is how we initialize the system and how we run um, dynamic simulation. And also with two machines, now before we have one machine and all the dynamic behavior with, with respect to the infinite bus. Now we have another component. So we will see more complex dynamic behavior. And that's the purpose of this example. So we were working, all the data is here, and we were working with a code to simulate this. But the first part is the initialization. And the initialization has to do with what are going to be the voltages and current at the terminal of the machine, because that will help us to determine all the state variables and algebraic variables of the machine. So we were working with the code. Uh, we're going to create a function to simulate this two machine infinite bus system. But um, for the moment, we put, a, 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 we commented this line, so it doesn't work as a function. And last class, we created the function for the data of the grid, basically the impedances of the line, and we obtained the Y bus of the system. And we were working with the Gauss, uh, um, the Gauss equation. So we have the system generator two, bus two, bus four, bus three, generator three, E bus one, and this is the slug bus. And also it's an infinite bus. So this generator will have an infinite inertia. We don't represent this because the voltage at this bus will remain fixed and the frequency at this bus will remain fixed because of the infinite bus. And this bus four has a load so we discussed last time that uh, we will need to consider the specified generated power for this machine and the specified terminal voltage for this machine. That will define a PV bus. And we have the specified generated power for this machine and the specified voltage at the terminal. Again, another PV bus, but for this bus, what we know is the active and the reactive power consumed at that bus. Voltage and magnitude and angle here are not known. And we obtained the equation for this. And the equation for the recursive equation using the Gauss technique was B2 spacer, let's call it three. There. So here we don't do anything uh, and the voltage B4 A plus one is exactly equal to that voltage. Okay, that's the procedure. Do you remember this uh, from 421? Do you have any question? No? Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to continue with our code and we're going to Try to get this uh, solution. One quick question. So I, know, I remember you saying we can use any method to get the uh, current injections and bus voltages. Mm -hmm. In a simple system like this, if we use DC power flow and assume the bus voltage is at one, is that going to throw off our dynamics too much? Yeah, because we will not be at the equilibrium point. And when you simulate from time zero, the system will have some dynamics already. And we want to start from an equilibrium point and see what will be the response of the system due to the short circuit, for example. But yeah, any technique that can give us uh, a good solution for the system. Yeah. The decouple might work too. Yes, yes. But uh, for you see, we we use the the flat star here. And the flattest star that we are using is one angle zero. 
why we don't use the DC low flow to obtain uh, an initial value for the angle. And instead of using a flat star, we use that initialization for the technique. That also will help. Okay, so what do we need to do here? And what is the process of this? The process will be, we need to assume a set of voltages. It can be the flat start, or it can be the initialization that David was suggesting. We can use the DC low flow and get a solution that is going to be better, right? What is the solution that is going to be with DC low flow? B1 is fixed, one angle zero. But B2, how much will be B2 with the DC low flow? The magnitude still is one, but here we will have an angle theta two obtained by DC low flow. This angle can be obtained easily, and we can start from there. And B3, the same thing. B3, DC, and B4 also. Uh, this is going to be a very good guess for B2, B3, but a poor guess for B4, because B4 is a PQ bus and the magnitude of B4 will not be one. For this one, yes, we expect that the terminal voltage is one because we are assuming this machine will have an ABR, a, a, a controller that will keep with that uh, specified voltage at the terminal. So that can be a better initialization for this procedure. But let's not forget what we're trying to do here is to find what is the solution for the voltages in the grid for the initialization. Because we will have a set of power injection and some voltages specified here, another power injection. And there must be a solution for voltage that will allow us to have that power flow in the system. So the process again, we have an initial guess for the voltage. With that initial guess, we need to estimate the current. We talk about how we estimate the current. How we're going to- get Here we have the equation for the Gauss procedure. So we're going to assume we're at some iteration K. And at that moment, we have the solution for the bus voltages. Voltage at bus one is given. It's the slack bus, but in this case, it's more than the slack bus. In the it is the infinite bus. At that iteration, we need to calculate what is the injected current corresponding to those voltages we have. But the injected current also is partially specified because we have. PV buses and PQ buses that will give information about the power. So we need to express this injected current in terms of the injected power. And that's what we have here. The injected current, for example, in bus two, is going to be the conjugate of the in injected power, complex power, divided by the conjugate of voltage B2 at that iteration. Something similar for bus three and bus four. Because bus two and three are PV buses, then P2 and P3 are given. We know the value of this injected active power. As a PV bus, we also know the voltage magnitude, which we're trying to determine that but the voltage magnitude is going to be given, but the reacted power is unknown. So at this point, we need to find a procedure that can estimate what is going to be that reacted power injected, injected in that bus. For bus four, because it's, this is a PQ bus, then P4 and Q4 are going to be given. Using the information we have, then this is the result, resulting injected currents for the three buses, two, three, and four. PG2, PG3, PL, and QL are all given. So the only two 
powers we need to calculate for this iteration are going to be the injected reacted power in bus two and in bus three. How we're going to do that from circuit? We have an estimation for the voltages. So we have that vector and we know the admittance matrix of the system. So for that vector of voltages at iteration K, we can calculate what is the current injected at that, at that iteration. So with those current and those voltages, then we can calculate complex power. So for example, the injected complex power in bus two at that iteration will be B2 multiplied by the current injected in bus two conjugate. This is the complex power. So if we take the imaginary part of that, that will be the calculated reacted power in bus two, injected in bus two at iteration K. A similar equation we apply for obtaining the complex injected power in bus three. And by taking the imaginary part, we obtain Q3 calc at iteration K. This is something that I explained last class and the equation are here. So we have the specified vector with the Y bus, we have the injected, estimated injected uh, current vector in the bus. And then we do the element by element multiplication of these two vectors. Uh, and this one, I forgot something here. This need to be conjugate, okay? That, that's it. Now that we have that, we have we have to use the reacted power terms here because we need to estimate the value for this. So we will get Q G two. That should be the imaginary part of this vector second term, because this is the second bus, second generator. For generator three, similar, but this is the third term because it's the bus three, the third generator. That's what we need um, and to be consistent with what I put in the, in the whiteboard, I will put calc calculated. Yeah. Okay. What is the difference in the notation between the calculated and like calc K and just K? This one, the difference is because these here in bus two and three, you have a PV bus. So part of the voltage is specified. So we need to force, enforce that the voltage solution will have the magnitude that we are specifying. So when you do this calculation, you will get a complex quantity and the magnitude might not be the specified. But what, what we're going to get from this is only the angle. We will see in the calculation. Uh, let's imagine this is not a one angle zero, but this is 0 0.98 angle negative uh, or plus 10 degrees. We don't care about the magnitude. Yeah? That's an estimation of the solution. But what we're going to pick is that 10 degrees, because that will get us, is going to get us closer to the solution. From here, we will retain just the angle because it's a PV bus from here as well. But here, this is a PQ bus. The information we will get here is in magnitude and angle. We don't know the magnitude. We don't know the angle. We keep both of them. That's why we're going to do this. Okay. I guess my question is more like within the equation, but it's like 
I to Cal K, and then down further, it's just K, like at V3 and at V4 in the same equation. Yeah. Yeah. Like the difference between the Cal K and the just oh. K. Oh, okay. I will make it better. No, I will make it better in, in a note explaining this, uh, but these are going to be the solution we will have at each iteration. To get the solution, we need to have an intermediate step in which you will get these voltages. But these voltages in magnitude are not relevant. We expect that the magnitude will be close to the specified, but we will not get that. So what we're going to do, we're going to retain the angle for the two PV buses, and we're going to update the voltage in that way. As we get close to the solution, the magnitude here for V2 and V3 are going to be the specified when we get close to the solution. But at the, at the beginning, that will not happen. So I guess that this calc is an estimation. Might be, that might be a better term. For the current here is also an estimation uh, because we need to estimate the reactive power we have for the PV buses. When you define a PV bus, you are forcing the voltage to be a specified value. But as we have discussed before in previous courses with me or with other professors, there is a close relationship between voltage magnitude and reactive power. So higher voltage in a bus means higher injection of reactive power in that bus. You cannot specify both. If you specify one, the other needs to be free. Specifying a voltage of one per unit of these buses, that means for whatever power flow we have, this machine will be able to inject the reactive power needed to keep that voltage. So what I'm saying, voltage in Q, there is a strong coupling. You specify one or the other. The same thing for the angle of the voltage in the power injected. A strong coupling, you specify one or the other. And this is how you define the type of buses in a power flow problem. For example, when you say, I know how much is Q and I know how much is P. You cannot specify B and theta. And B and theta will be an unknown you need to determine. Yeah? There must be a voltage B and an angle theta that will meet that specify active and reactive power injected in the bus. That's what we do. But when we define a PV bus, well, we do something different. P is a specify and B is a specify. In that case, you don't know Q because you're assuming there must be a Q injected in the device that will determine a voltage B. So in that case, in a PV bus, you don't know theta and you don't know Q. That's why we need to estimate this Q. And the only way to estimate it that we have so far is if we have a guess for the solution, we have a guess for the current, and getting the product of this, you get the complex power, the imaginary part is going to be the Q estimated. I guess this calc has to do with that estimation. There are things that we need to estimate because we're unable to get those values exactly. And this K alone are going to be the steps that we have. To get the solution for the voltages, we need to have these intermediate voltages here because we, we need to specify what is the magnitude for them. Is that better? Yeah. Now A better name for the calculated current or calculated voltage would be the estimated current at bus two iteration k and the estimated voltage at bus two iteration k plus one. The same for voltage B3 
three and A three and voltage B four and A four. At each iteration, uh, we will have a set of voltages solution. And when you replace them here, as you can see, you have a complex equation. There is no guarantee of what is going to be the magnitude of voltage B2 and voltage B3. Both bus two and bus three correspond to PV buses in which we are specifying a magnitude for the voltage. Therefore, we need to def make a correction at each iteration. So when we obtain this B2 calculated at bus K plus one, as there is no guarantee of the magnitude of this voltage, we're going to enforce that the voltage B2 at iteration K plus one is going to have the specified value but the angle of this will be the same angle that we just have calculated. In other words, the only information we retain in this process is going to be the angle of the calculated voltage B2 and the angle of the voltage calculated for a bus three. For voltage B4, as this is a PQ bus, voltage magnitude is not specified. So the value we will be getting for B2 calc is going to be for calc is going to be exactly the same value we will accept for the voltage B4 at iteration K plus one. And we need to repeat this process. The process is let's fit this equation with an initial guess for voltages. Let's estimate this injection. Let's update the voltage. New solution are going to be determined in this fashion. For bus two and three, we retain only the angle. Bus four, we take everything. With these new voltages, we are going to fit this equation with the same volt with these voltages. Estimate the current, get new solution, and repeat the process. When we're going to stop, when we don't see any change in the voltages, that might be one uh, stopping criterion. Yeah, another stopping criterion could be the power calculated at each bus when you do this. If you get the right voltages here, the right voltages and you do this product, you will have a current, the right current. Then if you get the complex power with these two vectors, then you should have the same specified powers that we have in the system. That can be another stopping criterion. Whenever we're getting close to the specified power, we stop. I think we can use that. Um, so, what we need here are uh, the specify power. So we have, for this problem, we have P2 specify, um, how much is that? Is 1.6 for generator two and 0 0.8 for generator three. And the load is negative 1.5. So we can use this uh, and de define this initially. And for specify is because this is a load is negative 1.5. And the other that is a specify is Q4 specify, which is the negative of the reacted power consumed at the bus, negative 0 0.5. What is going to be the, when we have the solution, the calculated power that we have here should match this value, right? So we can define uh, delta power. 
delta P. And that delta P will be the specified power and bus two, bus three, and bus four minus the active power that we are calculating with that ES vector. And that is going to be the real part of S vector. But S vector has four terms. So we need to pick from bus two to bus four. So that's the delta power for P and delta power for Q will be just one term, which is going to be uh, Q for specify minus the minority part of the complex power in bus four. So we have, we're going to look at the delta power. When delta P and delta Q are zero or below a tolerance, that means that we got the solution. So we can define here the error. Uh, this delta P can be positive or negative. Uh, so first of all, we need to take the absolute value of this. That's one. Delta P, as you can see, has three terms. So what we can do here, we can take the maximum of those three terms. If we make sure that the maximum is below, below the tolerance, all the equation will be below the tolerance. So we can do that. Um, and from here, we will pick one term. But also, we, we, we need to get and compare what happened with the reacted power. The reacted power is just for bus four, you have just one term. So you will have two terms to compare. So here you will have the maximum term from the delta power, P, and the delta Q. And here we will need to have another maximum because here you will have two terms, one for delta P and one for delta Q. And you will pick the maximum. We will define a tolerance. What is a good tolerance for power injection? We're talking per unit. What is a good value? OK. So one to the minus three per unit. And we will repeat this while the error is still greater than the tolerance, repeat. So we need to do that. We have an initial guess for the for the vector. So I guess we, we have this in B vector. We have B1. B1 is B1, it will, it will not change, right? So we, we, can, we can define as a fixed quantity here. Um, this is one per unit. So B1 will not change. But then we have B2 um, iteration K. And this one is, is going to be the one we obtain for, from that B vector. And that's going to be the second term. Then B3 K will be the third term. And B4 K will be the fourth term. So we have the voltages. Um, do we have the reacted power here to do this calculation? Yes, we calculated that here. We have um, the reacted power calculated right there. It's already calculated. With the initial guess, we have those values. So we, we're going to start writing B2 calc. And this is going to be, parenthesis, 
the first one is going to be the carbon injected in bus two. So that's going to be PG2. How do we, P, P2, we call it P2, 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 P2 specify, and then the negative of Q, P2 there. Is that the value? Yeah, P2. Yeah. And then the reactive power is key, Q, G2, call it. And we will have to update that body. Q, G, 2, calc. And then this is going to be divided by the conjugate, oops, conjugate of the voltage P2, um, K, P2, K. The next term, this is one right here. So we will need to repeat this. So we have Y bus two one multiply by B one and then Y bus two three multiply by B three and Y bus two four multiply by B four. And yes, these are B four K. B three K, B one is fixed, and all of these need to be divided by Y bus two two. Okay, are you following this? Yeah. Okay, and then for the next line here because the equation is pretty similar, we're going to copy and paste and make the changes. P3, this is a power P3 specify. This is a reacted power Ku3. This is the voltage BG3. This is Y bus 3, 1. By was 3, 2. This is voltage D2 and bus three, four voltage B4K. And this is the, the diagonal term, three, three. And the last one is B4. We have P4 specified. Do we have that value? Yes. And then Q4 specified. there divided by the voltage B4 and this is 4 1 this is going to be 4 2 voltage B2K and this is 4 3 voltage B3K all of these divided by 4 and 4. Now we need to update the voltages we have the voltages here, but we need to update them. So B2K, the new value for B2K is going to be the V2 specify. Um, maybe, maybe we can define that here too, V2 specify. This is a one per unit because these voltages can be different from one per unit and B3 is specify. In this case, it's one per unit. Um, so this is B2 specify multiply by the angle. And that's going to be exponential of J angle of B2K. That's the only, oh, B2 calc. Thank you, there. That's the only information we are updating. For voltage at bus three, something similar. This is B3 specified, but this is B3 calc. And this is B3. 
And the other is, is the one that we just obtain completely because this is a PQ bus. So we are supposed to have new values for these voltages that are supposed to be better than the one we obtained before. Now, how do we know if they are better? What do we need to do? Delta P and delta Q. So to do this, what do we need to do? Calculate currents, current injected. So that's uh, Y. We can, I think, uh, did I call it Y vector? I vector. This is I vector. It's going to be Y bus multiplied by B vector. And B vector should be B1, B2, K, B3, K, and B4, K. Now with that, we get the complex power S vector. And we repeat what we did before is B vector. Let me define this as a B vector. B vector there. So this is B vector right there. This is voltage vector element by element multiplication. That period and that multiplication symbol, element by element multiplication of the voltage and the current. So this, if this is a better solution, this S vector should be closer to the specified value. So then actually we, we just repeat this and we get the error there. So with that vector of power, we calculate the delta P and delta Q. And we have an error. If the error is well below the tolerance, we're done. We're, we found the solution for B2K, B3K, B4K. That's the solution. If not, we will repeat the process. And that should be the solution. Um, let me put this B 2K, B 3K, B 4K for now. Yeah. I'm going to stop right here. Yeah. Is it going to work? We will see. Um, error, very small. Uh, this this will I will have to write it here B two K B three K B four K those are the solution um, it seems that it's working yeah so what I'm going to do here um, we have the solution now for the voltages we can we we can just forget about this um, B B one is the the same uh, voltage we have for the slack bus, but B2 is going to be B2K, B3 is going to be B3K. So we erase that K from our equation. B4 is B4K, yeah? Um, yeah. Uh, we we can just see it. Yes, let, 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 let's do it. So I'm going to create the B vector. We have the B vector. I am. Yeah, we have the B vector. I'm sorry. Um, so what I can do here, 
uh, to verify this um, f print f uh, I don't need to do this uh, ops of b vector and b vector should be here there it is let's do it right here hi right. there so if i do ops b vector there what do we have here the observe the, the magnitude of the voltage at bus two and three are the specified so we got the solution so here we can get the angle of this, and that's the angle that known actually for the power flow problem. Um, we can convert this to, to degrees, and those are the degrees for the bus voltages. Okay. Up to here, what do we have? We have a power flow solution. But we're not done with the initialization. What do we need for the initialization? Initial uh, variables, all the which variables? Variables for each machine, state variables and algebraic variables for each machine. Now we know what we didn't know before because before it was easy. We talk about this. You have a generator in an infinite bus, and I ask you, do we need the voltage at the terminal of the machine? And Ryan said no, because we have all the variables that we need. Because we knew the voltage at the slide bus. We didn't need the voltage at the terminal bus. But in this configuration, as you can see, we need to know the voltage at the terminal bus. There is no other way around. We obtain the voltage at the terminal. you solving the power flow. Now, with that terminal voltage and that injected current in the bus, we can initialize the state variables and algebraic variables for the two machine, and we will have our initialization. With that, easy peasy, we program the equation as we have done so far, and we should be able to simulate this dynamically. Yeah? The terminal you have as the slide bus, or are we referring to the terminal of each machine? Oh, I pointed here, but this doesn't have any dynamics involved. So I am actually referring to machine in bus two and bus three. These are the ones that will add dynamics into our system. Okay. So any question? I know that maybe this was a little bit long, but I think that it's convenient to review the power flow solution and to understand. And actually, any technique might work. All we need to have is a solution voltages we need to know what are going to be the voltages in the grid that will satisfy this power flow in the system okay one quick question so even the voltage at uh bus four is positive i mean the, not the voltage the angle is uh positive shouldn't power be flowing why can you explain why what is your reasoning uh because it if the, if the angle at the slack bus is zero and the other two are generators, and if so, all the power going anywhere needs to be flowing to the load bus, since the angle of the load bus should be negative, the power is flowing to it, right? Yeah, right. So, what David is talking is about a rule of thumb that we typically apply to power system, and the rule of thumb is has to do with the angle. For example, Orion, if you have two points, give me a few more minutes and we will finish. Point A and point B in the system. If you know the angle in point A and point B, can be uh, Arizona. Is there any state with B? No. <laughs> it could be CDA, CDB, two buses in the grid. Um, and I tell you that. This one is greater than that. What can we infer? power to B. What power? Well, a positive power. Active power. Active, active power in general. So that's uh, it seems that that's what we have. There is a power flow going from the slide bus to the bus four. We need to shake that. Yeah, we need to double shake that. And for the reactive power. 
what can we say if that is like that, Ryan? Uh, that, uh, That's uh, tricky. Yeah. Tricky because the reactive power has a nonlinear, uh, uh, more nonlinearity than the other relationship. Yeah. When the angles are smaller, this is a very good rule of thumb for the active power. But for the reactive power, not that clear the relationship. But we can expect somehow this. If you have a voltage at bus B greater than the voltage at bus A, well, what do you expect? Which reacted power? Yeah, that's, that's hard to justify, but we should expect something like that. So we will check. Uh, we, we are done with this power flow solution. We will do the initialization. What about on Friday, we come and check this. So what, what would be a reasonable way to check this? Let's determine what are the power flow in the system. It seems that the, these should, because it's leading this voltage, it seems that the power should flow up. Uh, this is 1.6, this is 0 0.8, this is 1.5. That doesn't seem th that the power should flow up, right? Some of the power should flow down because you have an excess of generation with respect to the load at bus four. But we will shape that, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, any question? The code? Yes, I will do that, okay? And this Friday, hopefully we're done with this and we will move uh, forward to the next chapter. Thank you guys.